me take you through the topic of quadratic equation for today. This topic particularly is of higher significance in all the curriculum across the globe. If we consider IB or for that say IGCSC or SAT or ACT. So I'll cover or I'll try to cover everything in details. So the first thing which you must know is quadratic equation is represented by an equation of degree two that is y is equals to ax square plus bx plus c represents a basic quadratic equation or a general quadratic equation where a b and c are the constants the shape or the graph that will be given by, by this equation will be a parabola if i draw the x-axis and the y-axis this parabola might look somewhat like this but the concavity and the intersection with the x-axis are, are decided by a different quantities, which you know the concavity is decided by the coefficient of x square, whereas the intersection with x-axis will be decided with discriminant value, which will be we will see uh, later in this lesson. So here we have quadratic in the algebraic form. There are multiple forms of the quadratic equation representation. You must have also seen y is equals to a constant times x minus h whole square plus k. And this is the vertex form where h comma k is the x and y coordinate respectively of the vertex. As I stated earlier, the shape will be given by the co coefficient of highest degree term or the coefficient of x square. So whenever we have a to be greater than zero, so a value greater than zero, we will have a parabola that will concave upward. And if a value is less than zero, the parabola will concave downward. The intersection with x-axis, to know that, let's figure out all the critical point on a given parabola. First critical point are the roots. x1, x2. Second critical point is the vertex. Third one is the intersection with y-axis or y-intercept. And these roots are also called x-intercepts. And to our importance, there is a line which we usually find the parabola, also called line of symmetry. So vertical line passing through the vertex is also called line of symmetry. First thing we'll try to find is roots or x-intercept. To find roots or x-intercept, we have multiple methods, one out of which is quadratic formula. Where the x value is given by this formula of minus b plus minus root under b square minus 4ac by 2a. I'll take an example and try and solve this using quadratic formula. Let's say y is equals to x square minus x minus 6. To find the x value, the coefficient of linear term is b. So we will have minus of minus 1 plus minus root under minus 1 whole square four times. The coefficient of quadratic term is a and the constant term is c divided by 2 into 1. 
So this becomes 1 plus minus 1 square is 1 itself, minus 1 square is 1. And 24, so this here is 25 by 2. Simplifying, I get 1 plus minus 5 by 2, giving us 1 plus 5 by 2 or 1 minus 5 by 2, 3 or minus 2. These are the two x-intercept which our given quadratic equation has also called the root of the equation. Another method to find the roots is splitting the middle term. For splitting the middle term, I'll use the same equation. So y is equals to x square minus x minus 6. For splitting the middle term, we multiply the coefficient of quadratic term with the constant term and just keep the positive value of it. So the coefficient of you know, 1 into 6 is 6. We search for all the factors of 6 such that the addition or subtraction could give us the coefficient of linear term. So 6 has factor of 1 into 6 or 6 into 1 or 2 into 3 or 3 into 2. If I add or subtract 3 and 2, I'll get minus 1. So I'll be writing y is equals to x square minus 3x plus 2x minus 6. Taking x common out of x square and 3x, I'll be getting x minus 3. Taking 2 common out of the remaining term, I'll get x minus 3. Taking x minus 3 common, I'll be getting x plus 2. And here, we are equating it to 0. That means when the multiple of two number, that is a into b, is 0. So either a is equals to 0 or b is equals to 0. We can equate them separately to get the solution. So here, either x is equals to 3 or x is equals to minus 2. These are the two methods which we must be familiar while solving the quadratic. Alternatively, in a couple of paper, for example, in ACT, where you are allowed to use calculator, you can hit the given calculator and in the equation template, you will see quadratics. Feeding in the value will give you the roots of the quadratic equation. The second critical point, you know, after root is y-intercept. To find y-intercept for, you know, I'm taking the example of the above given equation. To find y-intercept, x value has to be 0. So substitute x to be equal to 0. So in y is my x squared minus x minus 6. When x has been substituted 0, we have 0 minus 0 minus 6 giving us minus 6. So y-intercept is 0 comma minus 6. Third important point as we discussed was vertex. So I'll redraw the graph or let's find the vertex first and then I'll try drawing the graph from that given information. To find vertex, <clears throat> we have the formula. X coordinate of vertex is given as minus b by 2a. And taking the equation y is equals to x square minus x minus 6. Here a is 1, b is minus 1, c is minus 6. So x coordinate of the vertex will be minus of minus 1 divided by 2 into 1, giving us 1 by 2. To find the y coordinate, we'll just substitute this value back into the equation, giving us 1 by 2 whole square minus 1 by 2 minus 6. So we have 1 by 4 minus half minus 6. So this will be minus 1 by 4 minus 6 and minus 25 by 4. So the vertex is minus half comma minus 25 by 4. Oh, my bad. It's plus half, not minus half. Now, 
pretty much all the information we have gathered. We just need to know line of symmetry. So line of symmetry is x is equals to, you know, in the case of parabolas and where it's a quadratic in terms of x, line of symmetry will always be a vertical line. And the equation of any vertical line is x is equals to something. So x is equals to the x coordinate of vertex, so minus b by 2a. So we have you know, just previously calculated x minus b by 2a was equals to half. So x is equals to 1 by 2 is the line of symmetry. Now from the given information, I'll just brief it whatever we have calculated. So, so far we have calculated first one, the roots or the x-intercept, which we got to be. I'll just check the values. We got the root values to be x is equals to 3 and x is equals to minus 2. So x is equals to 3 or x is equals to minus 2. Second piece of information which we got was y-intercept. And y-intercept is 0, comma minus 6. Third set of information which we got was vertex. And vertex was 1 by 2, comma minus 25 by 4. And the last one, fourth, which we got the line of symmetry, and it was x is equals to 1 by 2. I'll be using this information to plot a graph. And let's see, I'm choosing a different color. X and the y axis. We have roots to be minus 2 and 3. So minus 2 will lie somewhere over here, minus 2. And 3 will lie somewhere over here, 3. We have the y-intercept to be 0, comma, minus 6. So 0, comma, minus 6 will lie somewhere over here. So this is our y-intercept, so minus 6. And then we have at 1 by 2 and a value of 25 by 4, precisely minus, we have the vertex. So 25 by 4 will be closer to 6. So this is our vertex and values 1 by 2 minus 25 by 4. And a parabola has to be a degree 2 equation. And a parabola is a defined shape. So all we need to do is connect these points together. And I'll try drawing. I'm not very good with drawing, but still trying my best. So this is the parabola which we were talking about. And the vertex always gives us the minimum or the maximum value. Point to be noted here is the coefficient of highest degree term, which is x square, is positive value, that is 1. And hence, the parabola is opening upward. Else, the parabola would have been opening downward. Let's check on how many variable different types of cases which we can come across while solving a parabola. So the intersection with x-axis, so intersection with x-axis is very important. So intersection with x-axis. So intersection with x-axis is given as the root. And depending upon the nature of the quadratic equation, it intersects, a parabola intersects the x-axis or touches the x-axis or does not pass through it at all. So the different cases can be intersecting the x-axis, touching the x-axis, or not passing it at all. We call the first case to be two distinct real roots. We call the second case to be overlapping roots. We call the third cases to be imaginary roots. So for these to happen, we just focus on discriminant. In the quadratic formula, if you remember, the part b square minus 4ac represents the discriminant. If the discriminant is positive, we get two distinct real roots. If the discriminant is equals to zero, we get overlapping roots. If the discriminant is negative, that means root under b square minus 4ac will be undefined because we 
you know uh, there is a no defined value for root on the negative quantity and hence there will not be any intersection with the x-axis and there will not be any roots and in all these three cases we are just considering a value is greater than zero that is the coefficient of highest degree term let's focus on a value less than zero here in the first case this is the parabola in the second case this is the parabola just touching here and the third case this is the parabola no intersection at all moving forward uh, we have just two topics left first one is shifting of parabolic equation or graph and the second one finding the equation from the given information as in roots before i move forward in the case of imaginary root i would like to mention a very bold line here that is whenever the roots are imaginary we have complex conjugate pair if you have not seen it now you will see it later in the complex number topic but if one of the root is 2 plus 3 iota the other root compulsorily has to be 2 minus 3 iota and this is true even in the case of two distinct real root but when the value received is irrational that is if one of the root is 1 plus root 2 another root compulsorily has to be 1 minus root 2 so now moving forward uh, we have the graph shifting before and for graph shifting i'll just consider a very uh, you know i would say easy equation of simply y is equals to x square so y is equals to x square will be a parabola passing through origin and since the coefficient of x square is positive it will open upward now whenever there is addition or subtraction with the x value that is y is equals to y is equals to x minus 2 whole square or y is equals to x plus 3 whole square whenever there is addition or subtraction with the x value the parabola or the graph will move towards left or right so in the first case that is x minus 2 whole square whenever there is subtraction the parabola will move right by two units and the shape remaining same so somehow this is the new parabola and the steepness will be maintained to the same value and if there is an addition of the positive number the parabola will move leftward by three units and hence giving us the new shape <clears throat> second thing is when there is addition or subtraction in the y value that is y is equals to x square plus 2 or y is equals to x square minus 3 so in the first case whenever we are adding the value to the entire equation of parabola that is the y value the previous y value which was x square so the parabola will move upward by the same value that is 2 and whenever there is subtraction the parabola will move downward by the same value here it is three units so it will shift to from zero it will shift to minus three and this is the new parabola now let's combine these two things together and generalize it so my equation is y is equals to x minus one whole square plus four now there is a subtraction with x value that is the parabola is moving rightward one unit and there is an addition uh, of four unit to the entire y set that is the previously x square value and as the parabola will move upward so one comma four will be the new position of the lowest point and hence this will be a new parabola again getting back to the original equation of parabola y is equals to ax square minus bx plus bx plus c and i am interested in finding sum of roots that is the calculated x intercept value that addition will always be given by minus b by a and the product of roots
will be given by c by a. So in the previous you know, shown example, if I just look into the equation that is y is equals to x square minus x minus 6, and the roots were x is equals to 3 or x is equals to minus 2, and the sum of roots according to our formula will be minus b by a. So sum will be equal to minus of minus 1 by 1, which is simply 1 itself. And if I try using the root, so 3 plus minus 2 is also equals to 1. Hence, we are correct. Finding the product using the formula is equals to c by a, so minus 6 by 1, and using the roots 3 into minus 2 is equals to minus 6. Hence, we are correct there as well. And now, the last cookie topic, which is finding equation when roots are given. So, you know, these questions will not be asked in a very simple form, as in the roots are 3 and minus 2. They'll give you either, you know, the other red written topic, as in when I was talking about the roots being irrational or complex. So, whenever the roots are irrational or complex, they happen in conjugate pair. And we will take advantage of this one. So, I'm handling one sample equation and for irrational root and one for a complex root. So, if one of the root, one of the roots of quadratic equation is 1 minus root 2, find the quadratic equation. As I stated earlier, irrational root always happens in complex conjugate pair. So if one of the root is 1 minus root 2, it's but of it's obvious that other root will be 1 plus root 2. And now I'm giving you the tool, a formula, which is y is equals to x square minus sum of roots into x plus product of roots. So to solve such question, we'll always be using this formula. And here, let's find the sum. 1 minus root 2 and plus 1 plus root 2 will give us 2. Hence, our equation is x square. And I'll write in detail 1 minus root 2 plus 1 plus root 2 x plus 1 minus root 2 into 1 plus root 2. And it is x square and 1 plus 1, 2 minus 2x. And here it is. 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Using the formula, a plus b into a minus b is equals to a square minus b square. <clears throat> so it's, it was pretty easy. Uh, you know, the only hidden information was finding the other root and applying this formula. Same can be applied for complex number, as in find the quadratic equation. So find equation and precisely quadratic when one of the roots are 2 plus iota, just one of the root is given, 2 plus iota. The other root, again, using the same logic, will be the complex conjugate pair, which is 2 minus iota. Using the same logic, y will be equal to x square minus sum of roots. So 2 plus iota plus 2 minus iota will be 4x minus 2 plus iota into 2 minus iota. I'll have to simplify it here. 2 plus iota into 2 minus iota. It will be a plus b into a minus b, which will be a square. So 4 minus b square, which is minus iota square. Minus iota square is minus 1, hence giving us 5. So the equation here is x square minus 4x. My bad, I have written here minus. We'll change it back to plus because that's what in the formula plus five this is the final equation of the quadratic and uh, this is all for today i hope you guys uh, had a good time here and i was able to condense the topic to optimize on your time thank you so much have a great day